Y'all keep telling me to clean my badges, so fine, I'll finally... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bro, how long does this take? This is just for one badge. A few minutes later. There we go. All nice and shiny. And my switch screen, nice and smudgy. What is up and welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Last episode, we got our seventh gym badge, as you may have seen from my nice and shiny badges there in the intro. And now we have to take on Team Galactic. So we're here in Veilstone because this is, of course, where their headquarters are located. And we're going to take a little look and see what exactly is going on with them. Would you look at those antenna? I don't know what they do, but those are some mighty impressive antenna. <laughs> yeah, they sure are, dude. Hey, it's you! I bet you don't remember me, but I sure remember you! Cause of you, they took my Clefairy away! Oh no! Not his precious Clefairy! Oh, I feel so bad now! My partner calls it quits and went back to his hometown. I don't know anything about a storage key. I'm sure it wouldn't happen to be this nice and shiny Pokeball that you left behind, right? No one would be that careless, right? Of course, it's the storage key. <laughs> That's so funny, though. I mean, also kind of sad that we took away his Clefairy, but also confirms my theory that all the grunts are actually recurring. Like, you meet the same guy over and over throughout your adventure. Last episode, we also got ourselves the ETM for Rock Climb, though, and there just so happens to be a nice spot we can climb up here in Veilstone. So let's see what we can find up on this cliff. It will be a jar of full incense which you can actually use to breed Munchlax. Since it's a baby Pokemon, you can't normally breed. But if you make a Snorlax hold that, it will produce Munchlax eggs from the nursery. Now, there's one more thing I wanna grab before we head up to face them Team Galactic fools. We're gonna head inside my favorite store ever. It's just impossible for me to not dance when I come into this shop. The music is just too bopping. We're finally going to get the outfit that I've most been excited to check out, and that is the Cyber Style. I don't know if I'm going to keep it for the whole playthrough because I feel like it looks a little bit out of place. Like, even in the overworld, it's really cool actually, but I don't know if it really fits the style of Diamond and Pearl. Like, I feel we're in, like, Cyberpunk 2077 or something with all the neon and, yeah, I don't know. It might still be my favorite outfit though. Let me know what you guys think, and while you're at it, leave a like down below for more drip checks. Now it's time to head on to the Galactic Headquarters. Not technically though, we're going to the warehouse because we got the storage key, not the Galactic Headquarters key. So you guys might remember a while ago, we took on some grunts here alongside Dawn. And now, hold it there, you have the key? I don't know if you do or not, but a storage key is safe with our guard in front of HQ. Yeah, so if you didn't know where to get that storage key, this guy will hint at it. Uh, but it'll actually open up this building, not quite the headquarters yet. So as it creaks open, we will find ourselves a dust stone. Was somebody trying to evolve like their haunch crow and just decided not to at the last minute? <laughs> Maybe that's the guy that went back home, which is also a cool thing to point out that even though I thought all these grunts are being brainwashed by Cyrus or at least like somehow coerced into joining Team Galactic, it seems that they're all doing it out of their own free will, and they can actually leave if they want to, so... I mean, I don't feel as bad for them now, I guess. I do feel bad about what we're about to do to all the ones that are still in the clan, though. Or the gang, or whatever you want to call it. The evil organization, because, uh, they don't really have the best of Pokémon, and, uh... We need some training for the final gym. But you can already see level 47 for Travolta and Patchy. They are the cornerstones of our team. Or like the head honchos, or head honch crow, you could say. Not really, because uh, Toko is not the highest level, but he might catch up in just a little bit. Uh, I also have a bit of an interesting topic for today's episode. While we kind of make our way through this, I want to discuss the best evil team in Pokemon. So I'm going to kind of run through all of them, the history, and what I think of each of them as we sort of take down all of these blue-haired grunts who apparently have wigs, by the way, at least in the Pokemon manga. I remember reading a comment from someone saying that Team Galactic overall is a lot more menacing and evil, which is kind of a thing about the manga in general. Like, if you've never read it, 
Pokemon Adventures, or Pokemon Special, I think is what it's called in Japan, is a manga adaptation of the video games, but they kind of take their own creative liberties, and there's a lot more darker tones to it overall. Like, uh, the original series, Red, Blue, and Yellow, I think? Uh, all the gym leaders from Kanto get a lot more involved in the plot with Team Rocket, and even some of them are part of Team Rocket, like, I'm pretty sure Blaine and Sabrina and Lieutenant Surge are all evil, and they're actually working with Team Rocket, which is really interesting. Uh, but according to that comment, Team Galactic is also a little bit more menacing in the manga, but it also confirms that the grunts are wearing wigs, and it's not actually their hair that uh, they're being, like, hazed into all cutting and coloring a certain way, which I thought would have been an interesting kind of initiation into the cult of Galactic. Like, in order to really feel like you're part of the hive mind, y'all gotta get your hair done the same way. Kind of like the military, everybody has to get, like, that buzz cut to sort of make everyone feel like they're the same. We are brothers in arms. Although these guys are more like uh, brothers and sisters in style. <laughs> Their hairs are amazing. And here we've got our first set of teleporters, actually. On the right, we're going to find ourselves an item. Looks like I chose correctly, and we're going to get Scald. Very nice to see that TM here in the Sinnoh region, because that didn't exist back in Gen 4. But I think there might also be a hidden item somewhere in here. Let's uh, go ahead and whip out the good old dowsing machine that I love to hate on, and it looks like there's actually nothing. All right. Well, well, well. It's okay. I'm not upset. Moving on. We're going to the left teleporter now, and we might as well begin my little ranking of all the evil teams in Pokemon. And first up is none other than Team Rocket, who are of course the OGs, so there is a little bit of respect to be put on their name just for being the first ones. They even originated the warp panels that seem to be so common among all evil teams' headquarters or secret bases. Although they're not exactly a secret here in Sinnoh, like, Team Galactic seems to be a pretty big organization that, like, kind of most people know about. So I'm not sure how they're getting away with their evil shenanigans, but it's a nice twist on the formula. Like, instead of just being a gang, they're more like an organized, undercover crime syndicate posing as a company. What that company does exactly, I have no idea. They seem to have something to do with space, so it'd basically be like if SpaceX, like Elon Musk company, makes a little more sense because they're like privately owned or whatever, and then that would make Elon the Cyrus of the real world. I mean, you know, some people might not think that that's too far from the truth, but I would bet more on uh, Jeff Bezos with his Blue Origin, I think, is what his space company is called. Like, yeah, Jeff definitely gives me more, like, evil team leader vibes. In fact, I would not be surprised if in the next generation of Pokemon games, the evil team leader, or I guess, like, final boss is a bald guy. Because we already had Chairman Rose, which is also kind of similar, like a super tech billionaire. Or, I guess in Galar, he was more like an oil billionaire, like he controlled the energy of the region. But basically just some rich-ass dude became evil and, uh controlled the underworkings of the whole region. Team Galactic will set free all Pokemon, all of nature! Ha ha ha! Team Galactic will then own it all. What the heck? So by freeing them all, you're taking control of them all? Not sure that uh, that really makes sense there, but uh, I just realized this is actually the exit, and we're gonna find the Galactic Key, so... Gotta do a little bit of backtracking, because I'm pretty sure we missed a couple of items back up towards the top. But let me know in the comments what your favorite evil team from the Pokemon games is. And I'll actually share a little bit of what I think of all of them in this video. Like, we're gonna run through each of them. So, going back to Team Rocket, I mean, even though they're the OGs, they did switch it up a bit with the whole Rainbow Rocket thing in Pokemon Sun and Moon. The locked door is only open with a special key. Now, if I was comedy relief, I'd tell you where the key is. But I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, we already had the comedy relief guy, like, back in the front of a, the HQ, the one that dropped the key. So, it's okay. You don't need to be the comedy relief, buddy. You can just, uh, grab yourself a coffee. I'm sure they got some good galactic grind over here. So, yeah, Team Rainbow Rocket. Like, man, that had to be one of the best post-game stories right up there with the Delta episode. 
which I still don't know how I would really rank them, like if Delta Episode is above or below, but like Rainbow Rocket was so cool, the way they basically brought back every single evil team as part of like one large organized heist, led by of course Giovanni, who I think was the original Giovanni, like it's the same one that appeared in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and like did the little Celebi thing, but I could be wrong about that, I, I feel like there are alternate universes in Pokemon now. I mean, that's confirmed actually, because like the Mega Evolution universe is separate from the original timeline and it's a little confusing, but you know. Basically, Giovanni gathered versions of all the evil team leaders that had won in their world. So Maxi and Archie of Team Aqua and Magma, who actually succeeded in apparently flooding or droughting the world, which like, I never really got that. I mean, if you just flooded the entire world, what, would you all become like mermen and mermaids? Or like, everybody would be forced to use submarines all the time? Or build underwater cities and bubbles? Like, it just doesn't seem very... Oh wait, we actually did need the Galactic Key to get all the way up here. So I guess it's a good thing we went down to the basement first. So we're gonna find ourselves a TM for Dazzling Gleam. And a whole bunch of very old school looking computers, like dang. Uh, I don't even think back in 2007 when uh, Diamond and Pearl first came out, these were really common. I guess maybe in like a server room, which is what that might be. Team Galactic, you know, they might need uh, their own private storage system for all those stolen Pokemon. But yeah, I just really love that kind of gimmick that uh, Team Aqua and Magma were different depending on which version of the games you were playing. And that might still to this day be like the best games in terms of like version differences like we've never had since then two different evil teams depending on what version you're playing so team aqua and magma definitely top tier like i might even say they are my second favorite uh team rocket i guess i didn't really rank but they might be like my third favorite because my favorite which i'm gonna talk about next sir i might as well is team skull and I know it might be a bit of an oddball pick because they're kind of goofy overall, but it's mainly on your boy Guzma. Like, I just love that dude's personality and uh, just Team Skull, like the vibes that they give. Sort of like hip hop. I mean, the Team Skull theme, you can't deny, is a bop. Uh, so here we are in the main galactic building now. We conduct research around the clock. We focus on development of new energy resources. Oh, so they are actually more similar to Macro Cosmos than I thought. I thought it was just like a space company, but they're really just trying to create alternative energy? Anyway, now that we've got the Galactic Key, we can use that right here. But before we go in, let's talk to the receptionist. This is Galactic, uh, I mean, Galactic Veilstone Building. Yeah, definitely not an evil headquarters. Cosmic energy for the win. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could harness the boundless energy? So what, are you guys trying to like gather energy from the sun? or other stars, or I, I don't really know, but oh man, could have actually done that one as a double battle. And I think from here on out, you basically have to fight at least most of the grunts, like the ones back in the storage area were optional, but no, now we're forced to fight all these dudes and they're gold bats. Which reminds me, I still have my thing set to, well, set battle style instead of shift, so I can't switch my Pokemon in between taking these guys down, so Bonsai is actually taken. What the heck, I'm out of crunches? Uh, but as I was saying, Team Skull, dude. Like, I just love their whole vibe. The way that they're supposed to be, like, just your average gang, which is kind of what Team Rocket was, but they were a little too serious. I actually prefer the more aloof, not serious nature of Team Skull. I don't know, I guess there's just something more relatable about it. Like, they feel like something that maybe would exist in the real world, but then again, Team Rocket is more like the Mafia, and that also exists in the real world. And speaking of Mafia, let's put Toko up first as we take on this next grunt over here. Wait, there was also Team Yell in the Galar region. That is by far the worst evil team in Pokemon. Like, I wouldn't even call them the evil team of that game. It was technically Macro Cosmos and Chairman Rose. Like, Team Yell were literally just Marnie's fanboys. But still, worst, like, organization or gang in any Pokemon game. <laughs> I don't think anybody would disagree with that take. Speaking of Goofy, totally on the other side of the coin, we've got my least favorite evil team, which is probably gonna be Team Flare. 
I don't know, man. I just never really took them seriously, and that could be because of their outfits. Like, they're just so ridiculous with the bright orange and super crazy hair, which is also kind of similar, like, to Team Galactic here, but I don't know. I just, Team Galactic, I can believe it. Like, the whole hierarchy, like, the higher up you are as a commander, you have crazier hair, except for Cyrus, who's, of course, the top dog, so he can do whatever he wants. But then all the grunts all have to be the exact same, which, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the same for every evil team, but Team Flare just felt like they were trying to copy Team Galactic to me, except worse in every way, like the way that their commanders look, and especially Lysander, even though he maybe was the one that got the closest to actually causing a real catastrophe in the world, launching the, what was it called? Super Massive Death Ray? That definitely wasn't the name. I think it was just the ultimate weapon. And uh, you might have noticed there, we had a little bed that we can heal up on, which is nice because Bonsai was not doing too hot. But uh, there's also a couple of other warp panels that we can explore over this way. And I want to make sure we grab every single thing in this secret base. Or not so secret base. Which I'm still confused how they get away with just stealing people's Pokemon, but... Almost missed this Max Revive, which should come in pretty handy in the upcoming Pokemon League. Oh man, I'm so excited to finally take on the Elite Four and Champion. Like, you guys have been telling me in the comments, they are no joke in this game. Like, I'm excited to see exactly how strong they might be. Uh, specifically against my team, because I feel like we've prepared pretty well. But, uh, you know, we'll see when we get there. There's got to be a hidden item here though, right? Like, don't tell me. Really? What is the point of this? Oh wait, I saw one. What the heck? Or even... Are you kidding me? It's like on the other side of the wall? Why? What is the point of this room? Maybe it's to, like, get you to look at the dowsing machine and realize that the item was actually all the way back there? That's kind of disappointing. Well, moving on, I suppose, and on to the next evil team. Uh, who am I missing, actually? Gen 5 was Team Plasma, yes. I don't really know how to feel about Team Plasma, actually. I really like Getsis, and I love N, actually. N might be my favorite Pokemon rival, or I don't know if he's exactly a rival, but I love N and his whole story of being like the prince that was promised. But Team Plasma overall were pretty forgettable, and I'm not sure if that's just me or maybe you guys kind of feel the same. Like, even in Black and White 2, they had their whole outfit changed, and they looked even less memorable. Like, at least in Black and White 1, they had the sort of, like, old-school knight aesthetic going on. Knights of the Templar or whatever. But then in Black and White 2, they're just, like, wannabe ninjas, and I don't know, it didn't really work for me. I'm all about Getsis, though. Like, especially in the Rainbow Rocket episode that I mentioned, he just looks so out of place compared to the other evil leaders. Like, everybody's in their nice business suit, and then you got Getsis walking in their robes and everything, looking like a Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> His theme is also one of the best. Like, in terms of final bosses of the evil team leaders, like, Chairman Rose and Getsis gotta be up there for some of the best boss battle music. But uh, Team Plasma overall, not really my favorite, but I wouldn't say they're my least favorite either. I would say they maybe rank at like 7th, if we're counting all of them, like Team Flare would be 8th then. Okay, yep, that uh, was the wrong one to take. So let's go back real quick, get a little glimpse of what's coming up. I believe our first battle against the final boss. Or, well, technically the final boss would be the champion, but you guys know what I mean, right? Like the final boss of the evil team, even though this isn't exactly our final battle with him just yet. Uh, but over here by these crates, we're going to find ourselves a nice a rare candy. We've gotten a lot of those in this playthrough, dude. Like, I feel we're up to like over 10 by now, which is unusual compared to other Pokemon games. I feel they don't give you that many rare candies, but uh, I could be mistaken. Uh, I don't think there's actually anything here. You know, I'm not even going to bother checking the dowsing machine. I'm just going to assume that there ain't nothing to grab there. And we're going to move on to our epic showdown against the boss of Team Galactic. Right upstairs, we've got Cyrus. Of course, you got to bust open the doors first. And now, it's time, boys. I see. You must be the trainer I've been hearing about. The foolhardy one that's trying to stand up to Team Galactic. The... 
What is that? Just going Zen mode? I know why you're here. I can sense it in you. It's about Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azov, correct? We want to save them. What is up with our big ol' head, dude? They're covering up the whole screen. I no longer have any need for them. I'm finished with them. If your heart aches to save them, go right ahead. I could care less. It will save me the trouble of disposing of them. But I must say, you are a remarkable specimen. Those Pokemon have nothing to do with you, do they not? But still, you came to rescue them out of pity? Such pitiful emotions. Useless, illogical, and irrational. Pity and compassion are products of the weak and lacking human heart. You were compelled to come here by such vacuous sentimentality. I will make you regret paying heed to your heart! Okay, it's definitely a red flag when someone says we're an interesting specimen. That's giving me some major serial killer vibes there, Cyrus. I'm getting some nice vibes from the music though, as his first Pokemon will be Murkrow. Time to say hi to daddy here. We got Toko leading the charge, and I feel like he'll be able to handle it at level 40. Not too weak, but at the same time, not exactly, yeah, I mean. Oh, okay, Toko with the critical hit. We get those pretty often with the super luck ability, but this time it was actually from the love, the friendship, the bond that we have grown together. As it looks like Sneasel's coming out next, and you know what? Let's bring out Patchy. I feel we haven't used Patchy all that much recently. In the gym battle against Candice, we didn't even get to use it, because Travolta just swept through everything. And we could have actually had Travolta just low kick this little Sneasel too, or flamethrower it, like either one would work, but you know. I want to switch things up and get our Rampardos a shot. I do really like the battle background for Cyrus though. Like all the galactic grunts, that's actually the one battle background that I was really disappointed by in this whole game. Like, I feel all the battle backgrounds have been amazing and super detailed and like dynamic with things moving and stuff, but... Then you've got the Galactic Runs, which is just like purple space. So at least Cyrus here, switching it up a bit with his last Pokemon! And okay, never mind. So much for switching things up. This man's really just got a Gold Bat. Like, okay. Gonna Rock Tomb that away. But yes, at least his background is a little bit different to the usual Galactic Purple Void. We at least have some like planets and galaxies going on back there. I see that spiral, dude. As Travolta will hit level 48, Pachi and Travolta tied for highest on the team. Yes, quite curious indeed. I see you're indeed strong, and the basis of your power is your compassion toward Pokemon. How wasteful. Such emotions are but mere illusions, and like all illusions, they fade over time until death banishes them forever. That is why I have abandoned all emotions as useless sentimentality, but that doesn't matter. I doubt you'll ever understand my position. That said, I recognize that you're strong and courageous to come alone. This is your reward! The Master Ball! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! I'm sorry. Oh, that, that was a little too much, but I mean, it's the Master Ball, dude. I feel like that's the expected reaction. <laughs> it will unfailingly catch any Pokemon in the wild. But if it's not anything I require... Unlike you trainers, I do not make Pokemon my friends or partners. Unlike other Team Galactic members, I don't use Pokemon as tools. Instead, I make the power of Pokemon my own! How is that any different, though? Like, you literally are using them as tools, if anything. If you wish to save the Pokemon from the lakes, take the warp panel ahead. I'm off to Mount Coronet. That's correct, Mount Coronet, where you and I first met. I will ascend the mountain to its peak and then put an end to everything! I'll bring about a new beginning for everything. How poetic. Like, that kind of even rhymed a little bit there, didn't it? Well, off to Mount Coronet, I suppose. What the heck are these? They look like some giant cream containers, like lotion or, I don't know, hair gel. Not exactly hair gel. The thing I use is called, like, pomade or something. Oh my goodness, what is going on down here? Uh... Uh, I don't I don't like this at all. <laughs> I mean our cyber style outfit definitely fits among all these very neon green glowing Containers we've got here, but what the heck are those things inside of them? 
Are they growing their own Pokemon? Or maybe trying to make clones of Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azul? I can't see anything in our defense, but that thing we made, what is it going to be used for? What is she talking about? Oh my gosh, I'm like scared to step in here. We've got Commander Jupiter. I mean, Saturn. Gosh dang it. You came all the way here just to save some Pokemon. No, it's nothing new. I can't say I understand our boss. Why would he let a kid like you come and grow freely? We Team Galactic take all that we need and eliminate what we don't want. But anyway, you've taken the trouble to come. Let me welcome you. Consider it payback for your insulting me at the lake. Our second showdown versus Saturn and possibly our final one. Yo, I really like that expression. That was nice. Unlike Mars, who for some reason is all giggly and smiley like Saturn, seems like he actually takes this little gig seriously. Or as serious as you can take, you know, organized crime with those ridiculous haircuts they've got going. Aw, oh, come on! Why? This has happened twice now where I try to sucker punch the Kadabra and it just goes for like reflect. Whatever, dude. We got special moves, so the reflect isn't actually going to help you all that much since it raises uh, defense, not special defense. And again, another crit thanks to the power of friendship. But like, seriously, we could just be getting those through super luck. We don't, we don't really need the friendship at this point. You know, I'm actually kind of on Cyrus's side, at least in terms of <laughs> this little feature in the games, the little extra critical hits and surviving with one HP. I feel you, Cyrus. I want to just make the power of my Pokemon my own. Again, bro? Really? Okay, I'm not actually that sadistic. Like, I do like bonding with Pokemon. I just wish, you know, there was a little bit more interacting, like the Pokemon camp or actually petting them. Like, basically, if the feature was optional instead of forcing it by just, you know, battling and gaining experience or whatever. But I've done enough complaining about it in the past. I still don't really get exactly what Cyrus was going on about, though. Like, clearly, he's using Pokemon like everyone else. I don't know why he's trying to act all high and mighty, like, oh, pff, Pokemon, that's some little kid's shit! I don't do no little kid stuff, okay? I'm a serious man with serious ambitions that only uses Pokemon for their power. Or he makes their power his own, which, like, how is that any different? <laughs> You're tough, kid, but I still pity the likes of you. Why would you pity me? No one asks for your pity the heck? You need to get slapped, bro. What makes you so tough? Fine, do whatever you want with those three Pokemon. Press the button to set them free. If you want. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> He's gonna take a step back? Okay, I mean, you could just, like, easily overpower me considering I'm a little kid. <laughs> I love how we're just looking around nervously. Okay, that's enough uh, delaying. We gotta push the button and set the Pixies free! Azelf! Yuxi, Mesprit! Our boss crafted a red chain from crystals he took from the three Pokemon. That red chain is what he needed to shackle something out on Mount Coronet. But that's all I know. Who knows what he's really planning to do up there. And suddenly, Zatern also poofs away. Okay. Well, I mean, this actually took a lot less time than I thought it would, so I think we might as well move on to Mount Coronet. Try to knock everything out in one extra length episode and what the heck why was the teleporter not working i'm pretty sure i was standing right on it uh, that was kind of weird now the pomade containers are gone so we can head on out the green warp panel returns you to the ground floor onward to a new universe yeah team galactic go 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 how the heck do these panels even work like we get beamed up to the ceiling and then somehow end up over here now Wait, is there actually another hidden item? I don't even want to bother, dude. Let's just skedaddle. And I know we missed one for sure, but uh, yeah, I don't know how exactly to get to it. So let's uh, scroll on through our apps. And uh, there we go. Gonna fly our way over to, I believe, Orberg City is the way that we get up to the peak of Mount Coronet. If you enter from like over here in Celestic or Eterna, you won't be able to get to where you want to. I guess technically you can also go from Heart Home, but I'm pretty sure the easiest slash fastest way is from Orberg. So that is where we're going to be flying off to and make our way to the final challenge, the climax of at least 
the evil team. And I've noticed that I don't actually have any Pokemon following me, but I mean, what the heck? Alright, let's charge it up. And, uh, yeah, inside of the cave, we're not going to be able to have any Pokemon following us anyway, so... I guess it doesn't really matter. I would want to have little Bonsai with us, or actually big Bonsai now. Let's go for the Max Repel. It'll, it'll last a little bit longer, even though they're actually more expensive, which is why I usually just use Super Repels, or buy those mainly. But, uh, yes, over there you can see in the top right corner, the Rock Climb spot, which means we actually went the wrong way, so... Excuse me, I'm getting a little gassy. I don't even know what's going on, dude. But uh, let's try to not accidentally go down that ledge and go ahead and have the power of B Barrel get us on up here. No hidden item on that rock, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we're moving on to the real depths of Mount Coronet. And we're going to have a max potion to kick things off. I guess that's a little bit of a premonition of how tough things are going to get. Now, with uh, Team Galactic not messing around. But, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't really wrap up my little impromptu tier list. I believe I said... Oh gosh, I can't even remember now. Number one, Team Skull. Number two, maybe Team Aqua specifically, not Magma. I definitely like Aqua more than Magma. Uh, maybe Team Rocket would be third then. And then, uh, I feel like I'm still forgetting someone. Oh wait, there's also Ether Paradise, which, uh... Technically, there's Team Skull already in Sun and Moon, so uh, there's the TM for Rock Slide. Even though I think we got one of those last episode down in the underground. That's cool, we get two of them. Uh, but I think this is actually the way to the Team Galactic shenanigans, so I totally should have gone out that other exit first. And we need another little bit of rock climbing, so B-Barrel, you know what to do, homie. Slip and slide. And all the way at the end, we're going to find a bottle of iron. Dude, that's another thing. Aside from, like, rare candies, we have found so many vitamins in this game. Like, more than usual, I feel, in other Pokemon games. Okay, now we can head on into this cave and wrap up my little tier list. Uh, which is kind of hard to do because I don't have it, like, visually on screen right now. I mean, I probably showed you guys some pictures and editing, but... Right now, like me recording this, I can't actually see all the evil teams in front of me. So it makes it kind of hard to think of all of them. But uh, from the bottom, Macro Cosmos, definitely the weakest. Followed then by Team Flare, because just personally, I'm not a huge fan of them. And then I guess uh, maybe you would have Team Plasma. I don't even know how many there are on this list, but uh, that should be every generation. Feel free to rank them yourself down in the comments below, or just let me know which one your favorite evil team is and why. We'll have a little discussion. Maybe this could turn into a full-fledged video in the future, ranking all the evil teams. Let's move on from that whole uh, tier list topic now, because, okay, I mean, there's not really anything super interesting going on. This is the final gauntlet of Galactic Grunts, and uh, seems like they don't actually have all that many Pokemon, so... Especially if I just cut to us murdering them all as the flamethrower from Travolta. Not exactly the strongest there. I think I read a comment saying that I should teach that over to Togekiss instead since it has a higher special attack. But then I'm going to need some better moves for Electivire because I know I've seen people say to teach it Earthquake and Hammer Arm might be another one that I think it learns a little bit higher level up. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I really want Earthquake since we already have it on Bonsai. You know, we don't really need another ground shake and move. Uh, but here we are on the outside, and I'm pretty sure we actually already have a Repel going. Uh, but there's a couple of hidden items you can get. I didn't think that there would be one there, but uh, it seems I remember more than I give myself credit for. So we're gonna climb on over this way. Again, we got some really nice music on this route. Uh, that cave is, I believe, optional. Or maybe not? Uh, we're gonna go this way though first and get ourselves a nugget very nice Ooh, there we go now the music is really kicking in that sucks that we missed the drop because we were picking up that item but yeah i think this is actually the way to progress and what the heck okay i thought that was an item but it was just the repel there's definitely got to be an item on this rock though so smash it away little bidoof <laughs> I love how they made Bidoof and B-Barrel the HM Pokemon still. 
they know, dude, everybody had B Barrel on their team just because it's able to learn like six out of the eight TMs or HMs, which is just insane. And then, of course, Star Raptor could learn the other two. So that's why in the original Sinnoh games, those two Pokemon were crucial. Actually, that's the thing I'm underestimating. If we were playing those original games, we would definitely have a B Barrel on our squad right now. Got a little tiny mushroom over here. Very nice. Two hidden items right next to each other. Usually you don't see all that many. Okay, we got three. Never mind. <laughs> got an Ultra Ball there too. And yeah, as you can see, you're going to need Waterfall to go over that way. So we're going to head back out and go to the cave that we were just at. But uh, yeah, if we were playing the OG games, like we would have to have a B Barrel on our team right now. Because as you can see, there's been Rock Smash Rocks, Strength Boulders. Uh, we need to Surf to and Rock Climb. And there's even Waterfalls, like I said. But obviously, we don't have that HM yet. So hey, what the heck? I was trying to smash that rock, bro. I'm not trying to get in no fights. Now, this guy here's got the Beautifly and Dust Tox, which is another grunt that we've seen throughout the whole playthrough. Like, there's been a guy that's always had these two Pokemon. As uh, level 47, Yukina will be learning Will-O-Wisp. And you know what? I think I'll go ahead and grab that. Will-O-Wisp plus Hex combo. Doesn't sound too bad. Although, obviously, Shadow Ball would just do more damage, but... Will-O-Wisp has that added effect that it cuts the Pokemon's attack. And there's still one more, the Golbat too. I don't know, man. I guess you could say that they just keep recycling the Pokemon amongst all the grunts. Like, there was that one dude who said he really wanted a Clefairy. So, assuming that his partner who quit also had a Clefairy or Beautifly or whatever Pokemon he had, that Pokemon would probably go to another grunt. So, this could really just be a totally different guy. Obviously, they all look the same because they got the same wig on and the same outfit. And oh my goodness, there are so many hidden items in this cave. This is crazy, dude. The only thing that there's more of than hidden items are, of course, these freakish blue-haired bongos. Jesus, I'm sorry. That was way too out of hand. Like, I, I don't know why I called you that. Really crossed the line with that one. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the whole little ranking list. Like, I guess there's a lot of ways you could rank the evil teams either on how much destruction they caused in their region or how much sense their plans even made. Cause someone like Team Flare, although they did almost blow up the whole region, I mean, what were they really hoping to accomplish with it? I feel like Lysander, wasn't he basically like a Steve Jobs of his region? Like he made up that weird Poketch type of thing. I knew there was a hidden item somewhere around here. It looks like it's beneath this rock. But, uh, like I was saying with Team Aqua and Magma, what the heck were they hoping to accomplish? I mean, Team Magma, I guess they're just trying to make everything land. That's more room for humans to live on, but Aqua just absolutely bamboozles me. Is that the correct use of that word? I don't know. But basically, I'm like, dumbfounded, bewildered, confused. Those are all basically synonyms, I think by what the heck they were hoping by flooding the whole region. Like, how are you going to live out there, bro? And on that same note, like, Team Magma, if you got no more water, what the heck are you going to drink? Like, you can't live without water, homie. And so, in that sense, I like Team Skull and Team Rocket a lot because their ambitions actually kind of made sense with the scope of what they were able to accomplish. Like, they weren't out here trying to take over the world or anything. No, they were just stealing Pokemon, and if they could get a really powerful Pokemon, then it would further help them, you know, get to their goals of taking over the region. Actually, I think they just wanted Kanto. They weren't even after the whole world. Like, they knew to keep it low, or at least keep their expectations in check, not immediately go for world domination when all you got is, uh, okay, you're just gonna turn around for me? That's very nice. If I think about it in that sense, it actually makes me respect Chairman Rose a little more. Or at least like the organization, Macrocosmos, because yeah, he did have a pretty solid plan. He wanted to harness Eternatus's energy since it was like the source of the Galar particles. And like that was his whole company was like the Galar energy. So it makes sense. But, uh, you know, just the twist of it wasn't really the most shocking. I think everybody expected Chairman Rose to be the, like, evil boss in those games, but I don't know. I wasn't really expecting a crazy twist or anything. Please don't pay attention to a lowly grunt with no Pokemon. What the heck? He's just being a cave block. <laughs> Turns around? Like, come on, man. 
And he's just gonna repeat the same thing again? That sucks. Oh, no! Oh, I was dreading this, actually. Of course, I've run out of repels, and what the heck? It's a Clefairy. That's the Clefairy that the Grunt has been looking for. You know what, Grunt? I'm gonna do you a favor, bro. Since you've actually been the kindest Grunt of them all, not the one by the cave, obviously, but the one earlier that dropped the storage key, like, without him, we wouldn't have been able to even get to Team Galactic. Christmas is coming up. I feel like it'd be a nice little gift for him. And off of that, Patchy's gonna get hit level 50, the first one on the team to hit that halfway milestone to maxed out level. Clefairy is pretty cute though. I can see why the Grunt wanted one so badly. But yeah, we ran out of repels, which really sucks. So uh, I don't know if I even wanna try to make my way through the rest of this game without any, oh God. The sad thing is we're like almost there. So I really don't wanna have to go all the way back to buy more repels. Like, oh geez. We haven't gotten the item on this rock, it seems. We gotta revive. Can any of these rocks perhaps have a repel? Or hey, maybe we actually picked up a repel already. Uh, of course not. Uh, we do have a lot of escape ropes, so could at least get out of the cave easier, but we're actually not running into any wild Pokemon right now, which is very surprising as the exit is right here, and hopefully I didn't jinx it. Nice! We're out, homies! But there's still some grass out here, and actually there's still another cave that we've got to go through, but I believe this should be like the very last cave. Well, before then, we gotta get through this little strength boulder. Can we get all through the grass? Nice! We got another big mushroom. Yo, we're gonna be loaded after all these battles, especially because I've had the amulet coin on Toko this whole time. Uh, I believe there's actually one more hidden item right on this step or little empty patch of grass. Oh no, there isn't. Okay, well, oh, I thought that was a wild Pokemon. Hey, there's the other item. We got a little tiny mushroom. And I might be missing something else, but oh my gosh, what the heck, bro? What is this luck? We didn't run into a single wild Pokemon. Of course, in this part of the cave, we're probably gonna run into quite a few and so many tiny mushrooms too. Yep, there it is. It's okay though, we're almost there. Just trust me. Breathe, everybody. Through the nose and out. We're gonna do this together. This is basically the final barrage of galactic grunts. It's kind of like the Nugget Bridge back in Kanto where you've got like five battles back to back, except they're all grunts with like the weakest Pokemon ever. Aha, it seems there was a hidden Stardust on this rock as well. And of course, again, just breathe guys. In, hold it, keep holding it. Gotta beat this grunt without taking a breath. <sighs> God, I don't know why I did that. I feel like dizzy now, but we made it guys. Spear pillar, geez, I'm literally out of breath now. But as you can see, we've got quite the gauntlet coming up. Jupiter, Mars, Cyrus, and these two little grunts. We might as well face off to end off this episode. Don't meddle around, of course you're gonna do, aren't ya? Yeah, I mean, Never heard of these meddling kids? What, you guys didn't have Scooby-Doo growing up here in Sinnoh? Or maybe some kind of like Pokemon version of it? Like uh, Scooby Growlithe? Uh, I, I don't know. That's the only dog Pokemon I could think of. Is there any Pokemon that looks like Scooby-Doo? The closest I can think of is maybe Boltund. So maybe Bolty-Doo, where are you? Why am I even trying? Oh, not the aftermath. Jeez, we actually took a lot of damage because both of the Pokemon I'm leading off with are not exactly the best matchups here against the uh, Galactic Grunties. But hey, we'll at least finish off their first two. And I believe they do still have another round of Pokemon coming out. Ooh, the double level up. I like the coordination there from our newest and our oldest team member. Of course, Bonsai was our starter and Yukina just joined up last episode. I have been liking using Frostlass so far, by the way. It hasn't been in too many battles, but I can definitely see the potential. In fact, let's uh, fully test it out here as we go for the Hex, and I'll Giga Drain that Glammy. I'll get ourselves back to full. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, there we go. There's the potential I was talking about. Can tank up the Sucker Punch and one shot with the Hex. 
Heck yeah. That's not even that powerful either. That's like a 60 base power, but then again, it is just Crow Gunk. And the Giga Drain also one shot, which means Bonsai is going to get back up to full health. No need for no potions or nothing. He is ready for the battles coming up in the next episode, because that is going to do it for today, guys. That was quite the odyssey to get all the way up here to Spear Pillar, but next time we'll be taking on the boss, Cyrus, as well as his two goonies you can see there. That was just pathetic. We're going to let you pass so you can get pulverized by our bosses. Yeah, whatever you say, dude.